the way these people steal in Nigeria, it can wreck any other country if any other country tries what this Nigerian uh, uh, government officials are really doing. If any other nation tries the level of embezzlement of funds in other countries, if it happens like that, those countries will not survive it. I wonder how Nigeria has been surviving it. But well, it is obvious because things are beginning to go down gradually. It is beginning to be obvious that uh, the stealing is actually affecting the nation. Imagine the case of Mena, that is uh, the chairman uh, of Pension Reform Tax Force team. Imagine the huge amount he stole. It is so absurd when people steal money like this, and at the end of the day, nothing is even done to them. The next day, you just hear EFCC arranged them, and after then, they had a court case, one or two sittings, and that is, that is it. After then, you don't hear anything. You don't know what goes on after uh, such cases. You see what other countries are doing. People, they execute people that steal from the country like that. Even if they are not executed, they should be put in, put live, they should be put in live imprisonment. But here, they are being pampered. Some of them take the money out of the country and, you know, even go outside the country to, to, to spend this money and they are being caught again for money laundry. All these things have affected Nigeria so much. And I think it has to stop. I thought this administration first came to fight corruption, but it was manhunt that it came for because it was, I would even say, a witch hunt because they were just after the opposition. They forgot that most of the thieves we have in Nigeria are actually inside this very present administration, the president the Muhammad Buhari's administration. They are so much there because while they left those other administration, he also recruited the, recruited them into his cabinet and they continued their embezzlement. And this has affected so many things in the country today. Well, let us see what uh, EFCC is talking about uh, the case of Mena and uh, how far they've gone with uh, the money he stole. Well, well, EFCC has actually made a new revelation about pension money in Mena's account. And that revelation is what we are yet to find out. Let us hear what the EFCC has to say this time around about this revelation that they said they found about Mena's uh, account. All right, guys, without further ado, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do and give this video a thumbs up. All right, it says that the trial in absentia of Abdul Rashid Mena, former chairman pension Re reform tax force team, continued on Wednesday with stunning revelations about how 14 billion Naira pension money was systematically pilfered. The trial was before Justice Okong Abang of the Federal High Court, Abuja. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is prosecuting Mena alongside his firm, Common Input Property and Investment Limited. Both are facing a 12 count charge of operating fictitious bank accounts, corruption, and money laundering to the tune of 2 billion naira. At today's trial, counsel to Common Input Property and Investment Limited, the second defendant, Adiola Dedipe, told the court of his intention to disengage as the company's counsel. Though prosecution counsel, Ms. Ms. Abubakar, acknowledged the receipt of the defense counsel's disengagement application dated November 25, 2020, and made no objection to it. Justice Abang ruled, ruled that a daily pair should remain counsel to the second defendant by the court records. The testimony against Mena continued with that of night prosecution witness P.W. Nair Rukaya Ibrahim, a principal investigation officer with the EFCC in anti-money laundering and combating terrorism finan financing units of the commission and member pension fraud team. He stated that he knew Mena and Impute Property Investment Limited following the investigation of EFCC in 2010 to join in the pension verification exercise. According to him, a payment mandate bearing the names of several individuals totaling 94 million naira was discovered during the course of the verification. He said some of the pensioners' names on the list were fake 
for which a report was made to the EFCC by the team, leading eventually to the creation of the pension fraud team. The pension fraud team, he said, rose to about 30 banks requesting the bank accounts of Mr. Stephen Oroshaye as the head of service. It turned out that Mr. Oroshaye at that time operated 66 illegal bank accounts unknown to the accountant general. Our investigation revealed that there were five modus operandi that the suspect whom we were investigating at that time was using to steal money from the pension account. In total, we were in total we were able to deduce that 14 billion naira was stolen from the pension account. The five modus operandi were payment to fake pension, non-existing contracts, illegal payment to National Union of Pension (NUP), and illegal payment to other association called Association of Retired Federal Civil Servants. We discovered that the suspect will often pay companies for non-existing biometric contracts and once the payment is made they withdraw cash and hand it over and likewise payment to the two association of NUP and association of retired federal civil servants they will withdraw the money cash and hand it over to the pension who asked them to supply the account once we concluded the investigation of those who were indicted they were charged to court and some have been convicted the witness said According to him, Abdul Rashid Mayna was part of those indicted and charged before Justice I. Equo of the Federal High Court, Abuja, but that he ran away for six years and was arrested and charged before the present court. The PW9 revealed that Mayna, as chairman of the pension board, was deeply involved in stealing pension funds. One of the things discovered was the payment of 133 million naira for a non-existing contract to Zanjik Technology, a company he appointed to computerize the pension payroll. The money was withdrawn in cash, converted to dollars, and handed over to Khalid Bill PW5, a staff of Fidelity Bank, and handed over to Mayna Secretary and Igwe Oluchi, who is now standing trial at FCT Court, Guagualada. Zanji Technology and its owner, Hamed Mazangari, are also standing trial for inserting about 15 fake persons into the pension payroll, which they were engaged to computerize. According to the witness, we also discovered that Frederick Hamilton Limited, owned by Osha Affair, represently standing trial with seven Orochaye who received payment for a non existing biometric contract handed over about 250 million naira to Mehina. Well, obviously, you can see how evil these guys are. Well, guys, please drop uh, whatever you have to say about this in the comment section. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Do have a pleasant time. Bye for now.